Greetings, dear ones, I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And again, my partner steps aside and the purity of the message is enhanced. I say that for even he is experiencing differences in the energy of what he has done for 23 years, which is spiritual. The very process of channeling is also shifting. If indeed channeling is an open message coming from the portal of the pineal, and if indeed the energy of the planet is starting to support this, it means that that particular channel that opening, that portal, is going to get bigger. And for him, it's different. For him, it doesn't necessarily feel comfortable. And this, he is even dealing with. More energy comes in. It, it affects his physiology. It affects what he's used to. And so even in the delivery of the messages, he has noted they become shorter. They have to. The portal is larger. More is being transmitted in the third language than ever before, even to the listener after the fact, even to the reader on the page. There is an energy that is multidimensional that carries messages far beyond that which is verbal or written. And it rides along with this message as you hear it right now. There is so much more at hand as we open this and begin to speak. Each human in the room and reading these words or listening to this message has a life path which is unique. None of you the same. You might think that might be very complex. And yet for spirit is not. For the wholeness of all of you is hooked together. It is a oneness of a puzzle where the attributes of the one help the other in ways you're not even familiar with. And so it becomes complex. But again, we say it is sweet. It is benevolent. It is on purpose. So, dear healer, and I know who is here and listening and reading, if you are experiencing issues and problems, now you know why. If the, if the pipe is bigger, the water pressure may change. It may go down. If the pipe is bigger, if the delivery of the water is the same, the dynamics of what you are receiving as information and healing energy as a giver is changing. And you may have to adjust it in ways that you don't, you don't expect in order to get the same or better results. Know this, the design is that nothing is going to get worse, all right? <laughs> that is the design. 2014 is the beginning of the enhancement of the old soul's ability to work on the planet directly with the energy that you always expected as an old soul. It's the beginning of your time. And it's going to take a while and some of you are not going to feel it for a while because you're different. But in general, there should be a feeling in all of you and those listening, there should be a feeling that the year is different than last year. You ought to be able to take a deep breath and say, I'm so glad it's 2014. And feel the difference and not just echo what somebody's told you. And that is the, the personal touch of you and your innate, the intuition that you have. And so we begin a series of lectures, never telling my partner when they're going to occur, about demystifying the new age. 
And in the process, we have said this may very well be offensive, especially to teachers who have a mindset that they've always taught a certain thing a certain way. Let me address the teachers just for a moment. Dear ones, in the old energy, absolutely everything you got was, was pushed through a filter, a dark filter of old energy. So much of what you had were metaphors, we'll talk about that in a moment, that you then linearized and delivered the best you could. Nobody got it wrong. You did the best you could. But when you take the filter away and you see what it really is, please understand, this is a gift. There's no judgment as you open the eyes and see, ah, oh, it's different than I've been teaching. Celebrate it. And then teach what you see. All these things that are coming about that are going to start to clarify what you've been doing may very well shift a little bit of the paradigm you always thought you had control over. It's going to be a little different. It's like those who hear the lyrics of a song and then finally see them in print and realize you've been singing it wrong. <laughs> the word is not that word. It's like that. So you might have been singing the song and teaching the song and enjoying the song and open the manual and finally you get to see it written down and you go, oops. <laughs> so you take a deep breath for a moment and say, it's okay, it's okay. Now I'll just know better and teach it differently. Human beings will take something like that and they'll twist it and they'll look at their lives and say, I've been doing it wrong. Do you understand that's old energy teaching? That's an old energy consciousness? Perception. Perception about the future. The first thing we want to give you is an admonishment to try to desingularize things. We have said this before. What you do as human beings in your perception is try to align things so that you are satisfied with the linearity and the compartmentalization that you have, have seen them. Even though some concepts are not that way, you create them that way. Now let me get more specific so you know what I'm talking about. Spirit has always spoken to humanity in code. If you've read the books of Revelation, it's in code. Nostradamus wrote in code so that his friends wouldn't know what he was doing. <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> but true spiritual prophecy and sometimes the most profound messages, even to the indigenous, came in code. And the code were metaphors. Always metaphors. How does a multidimensional God speak to a single digit dimensional human being? And the answer is through metaphors. That's always been the code. And yet some teachers, especially of old, will have taken the metaphors and then looked at them literally and taught them as literal. This is common, and you all know this. The seven days it took to create the earth were not seven days. They were seven dispensations of benevolent grace where things were created in a way that made sense. And the result was the planet. But this is what we're speaking of. You know this now. You've seen the common sense of it and you figured out this is what spirit really meant. So it's time to start applying that to some of the things that you hear daily or have been taught about metaphysics in general, the minutia in particular. And it's the minutia that will get you in trouble. Anytime you hear the word crystalline associated with anything, 
whether it's a grid or it's a planet or whether it's an entity, do you understand that that is metaphorical and it, remains, it, it means that which holds vibration or remembers? And instead, if you get a channeling, that there is a crystal angel over here who is delivering messages or something of that nature, suddenly you have pictures of crystal angels. Suddenly the angels have a name. Pretty soon somebody's worshiping them. Worshiping them. You'll have little, little crystals made that will then be the crystal angel. Then somebody starts to channel the crystal angel. Do you see what I'm saying? I want you to start understanding that messages, even including mine, often are metaphoric and tell a greater picture and a greater story. These channelings that I am giving now in this new energy are given so that it will clear things and not make them more difficult. If you apply this rule to many of the things that don't make sense that you have learned or wondered about and ask yourself, does it refer to something else? Is it a metaphor for something else? It makes the message so much bigger. So much bigger. We don't have specifics because if we gave them, it might hurt the hearts of the ones who've been teaching differently. And we won't do that. We won't do that. So we give you the generalization instead. Look at the things that have become objects and see if they are different than you thought. That's just one of many things we're asking you to do. Perception. Stop separating things. Right now, it is human beings' absolute normal behavior to separate. You separate to survive. And we have talked about this before, and we've said the biggest difference between the old and the new energy is that the old energy separated and survived because you walked in the dark. The new energy has the light turns on where you can see each other. There's no reason to separate. Instead, come together. Easier said than done. I want you to start practicing it in ways you don't even expect. Here's an example. Without offending anyone, without hurting anybody's heart, you meet a man, and he's wearing a head cover. Let's discuss your thinking process. Immediately, the head cover would indicate his belief system, perhaps even where he's from, the lineage of what he might believe, and what that means because you know just enough about it, he's not going to like you. And so what do you do? Normally... You go another way. Perhaps he's from the Middle East. You're not. A little uncomfortable there. There are many in the Middle East who wear the head covering. Everything in your body, everything that your brain has been taught to do is to separate him from you. And your brain starts to tick off the reasoning and the logic. You don't have anything in common. If you get into a conversation, it will be a bad one because he doesn't believe what you believe. You don't believe what he believes. He's doing the lineage of what he has been taught. You are not. You are free. He's not. You understand? And you walk the other way. That is separation. That is intuitive. That is survival. Human being, it's going to take a lot of different thinking about the way things work for you to change that. Well, let's pretend you figured it out. You meet a man with a head covering, and here's what it tells you. That in his reality, it's his way of honoring the God inside him. 
That's it. He believes in God, and so do you. He honors his God so much, he's not afraid of what people will think. He's wearing a head covering. That's a little like you. You're not afraid of what you believe either. You've got something in common with this man. Now, here's what happens next. Did you know that he expects you to walk away? He's been wearing a head covering all his life, and he's walking around in a society that doesn't. He's seen it over and over, and instead, what do you do? You shake his hand. You look in his eye. You greet the God in him and the God in you. You've got things in common. You don't even have to talk about it. You don't even have to make friends. What do you think his reaction is? He sees a balanced person who doesn't care if he's wearing a head covering. He's not asking why. The per he just met a friend. Do you understand what just happened? Not only did you change your paradigm, you changed his. <laughs> and maybe he will go from that place less apt to think that those who say they're esoteric are going to walk the other way. This is the beginning of a brand new set of rules. And we could extend this and extend it. We could talk about countries and what they might look at that would bring together other countries with them for strength instead of separation. The new paradigm is going to demand it is a new survival. You hear, you hear these things here in channel. And you say, oh, how nice. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice concept. And then you go outside, you forget. What I'm asking you to do is practice it. I dare you. <laughs> how about that? And the reason I know how profound it is, is because I can see what's going to happen. I can see it because I've seen it already. The potential is so strong, I know it's there. It's not fortune-telling. To know a potential is 100%. You start doing this and you watch what happens. And it's not just a man with a with a head covering. It's the neighbor who doesn't believe what you believe. It's the one you've avoided. It's the one who perhaps even walks the other way when, when you come around. You get a chance in the chance meeting not to expect it. How about that? To walk right up to them have, and, and just greet them sweetly and, and move on. They'll think about that for a long time. <laughs> Is the God in you able to do that? And the answer is yes. Dear ones, this takes work. When you start changing who you are, how you behave, <laughs> and how you react, you're rewriting your humanism, aren't you? You're rewriting it. That's the invitation. Never before in the history of spiritual humanity, since the seeding of the planet took place, have the cells of your body been more receptive to suggestion? Suggestion of behavior. What works and what does not work. I will say it again. The new balance on the planet is the paradigm of survival. That is to say, the balanced ones are the ones who are going to be seen as strong. And these are the ones who are going to survive in the chaos around them. In the past, the ones who had chaos attracted the most attention and got what they wanted. Now they will be seen as flaying, flailing children that misbehave. And humanity will look for balance. Individuals, businesses, spiritual systems that make spiritual sense and common sense. The new age is also called the esoteric. There are many names for it. And if you're listening to this, I want you to combine these together. There are places on the planet where the word new age means cult. It's replaced by the words esoteric. 
And so use these both interchangeably, if you wish, I am, so that you'll understand the meanings of what follow. There are many out there who are channeling. And some of the names you recognize because they've been channeling them for a long time. I will go ahead and mention some of the groups that are represented in a moment. I do this in full love. Not to offend anyone. Not to make them different or wrong but to open up possibilities that are grander even than what they teach. There are many groups being channeled, many books regarding these groups. We mentioned those of the Octorian. We mentioned those from Sirius. We mentioned the Pleiadians and those from Orion. This is four, and there's many more. And it's confusing. I know what humans think. We live with you. We hold your hand through difficulties. We, we cry with you. We laugh. We are your support. And then when someone comes along and you read a message and it resounds of someone channeling those from Orion and you say, these are my group and you cling to it and you put a box around it and that is who you want to be. And when somebody says, well, what about the Octurians? And you say, well, I don't know about them. I've never heard of them. I just know about the Orion. And those are the real ones because those are the ones I resonate with and that is true. They're helping me. They're helping me. And so what have you done? You've excluded the others because that's what survival does. I want to demystify this. I want to tell you who they are. <laughs> they have a similarity, dear ones, and I'm going to have to start at the beginning. And here we go with things that are not provable, with the history of the galaxy that you might have heard from others or me, it is one of the most beautiful stories we could ever tell once upon a time. <laughs> a galaxy filled with the love of God, the source that had a system four billion years old or more of a time where you could develop planets that were already there, already cool and ready for life. And in this system, one at a time in the galaxy, one planet at a time, they would have the choice to be seated with spirituality, have their DNA changed, and a test of thousands of years of whether in the, in the process of living, if they could discover the God inside. And if they did, they had permission to go into ascension status where the physical actually melds into a multidimensionality and they become an ascended planet. And in the process of becoming an ascended planet, they are asked then to choose one other planet in the galaxy far from theirs and seed them with their DNA. Are you with me? There are those who will say, well, where did the first seeds come from? The center, the great central sun, the core, that which you call God, the creative source is everywhere. The minutia of it is not important. 
What's important that you know is this. Number one, they look a lot like you. And number two, they have DNA like yours. And now I'm going to give you information we've given you before, but you should know it just so that you know it. When you start discovering life in your solar system and beyond, you're going to find the DNA is common. You're going to find that your planet is not isolated from the galaxy in its processes of life. That evolution treats things differently because of the environment on different planets. But in basic terms, they're humanoid and they look like you. And they're not scary creatures with 14 eyes and three arms with shrieking voices. It's going to be one of the biggest things you find out someday that life is like yours. I'll tell you, when you find that out and you realize what it means, you'll know about intelligent design. You'll know about a benevolence in the planet that has worked to make things the same. Four billion years ago, can you imagine? The first planet to do this has no name. And the group that they were on, the, the names of the citizens, race, whatever you want to call, has no name. It was too far long, it was too, too long ago. It took millions of years, and they made it against all odds. It's a story, by the way, that we all know. That was the beginning, and what a story it is, and what they went through. And then they seeded another planet, only one, only one, in a beach of sand that goes as far as you can see, only one grain of sand gets selected for the choice, the special one. They found it and did it, and you don't know that one either. It's too long ago. That one didn't make it. And so they seeded another. And that one didn't make it. And they seeded another, and it made it. And you don't know their names either. It was too long ago. As an average, every single planet has to have approximately a million years from seeding to graduation. How does that make you feel? Let me tell you what year you're in. If we said one, would it make sense? <laughs> well, you got a long way to go. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. You crossed the marker of decision. The point at which the planets begin to understand what they're doing and what the goal is starts the clock don't let this don't let this make you sad well Carter thought it was going to happen a couple generations really <laughs> you'll all be walking around as light in a couple of generations and there are those who believe that start using common sense the good news is dear one that everything you've been through for over 30,000 years on this planet, slogging through old energy is over. And now is the opportunity you came for. I'll get back to the other planets in a minute. This is why you arrived here. And the good news is this. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You're going to participate in every single lifetime of it. And when you arrive... Let's talk about three or four generations from now. When you arrive as a new human being four lifetimes from now, let's say it's 300 years, you're going to awaken, and when you open your eyes, you're not just going to recognize your mother, you're going to recognize Earth. And your mind, within a few days, will be saying, welcome back, welcome back. And the child that you are, as soon as your eyes are focusing, will remember that's a cup, that's food. That's the creature who's married to mom. <laughs> You'll have it figured out. 
Perhaps in a month you'll be walking, maybe sooner. You won't have to learn to read. We've told you this before. Look for this. Doesn't this make sense to you? This is what evolution that is spiritual is going to contain. There's going to be some fast-tracking going on we haven't told you about yet. There's some masters coming back, and you won't see them as masters. You'll see them as inventors. It's okay. They don't care. Fast-tracking for you. What's next? As they bring a multidimensional inventions to the planet, that allow you to understand the templates of matter. Now, that may, that may mean nothing to you. Do you understand that if you, if you knew the template of matter, no matter what the object was, you could create it? If you had the technology to understand the template, you could create what the template is. Let me ask you this. What, I shouldn't even tell you because there's too much objection. What if you could create fresh food? Oh, you're so smart. The idea of the replicator came out of the imagination of a man who was a Pleiadian. And he remembered it from his planet as being real. And it is. It makes sense. Ask a physicist. Don't take my word for this. I'm telling you what could be. And the reason you'll be able to do it is because you won't be interrupted by war and horror and plague. Is that okay? Do you see how this works? One planet led to another. Four billion years, a million years at a time or more. Revolutions around the galaxy. How many revs? Many. You know, don't you, that all the planets and the stars go around the galaxy at the same speed. So there is a constant there. So every single galaxy has its own speed. It's the same as yours, by the way. And every sun and every planet on every sun has the same time clock if you measure in revs. So you can relate to each other as far as how long things take. If you talk to somebody else from another planet about years, they'll have no idea what you're talking about. Because that's your reality and not theirs. The Pleiadians are your parents. When their planet went into ascension and they had the full God within and they realized finally what they had gone through, why they had gone through it, and what they were there for. Full pineal connection, 100% DNA. Still physical. You know what that's like? <laughs> Don't look for their ships, all right? <laughs> They're entangled with you. Come and go as they want just by thinking about it. You were the next one after them. But they had parents of their own. And the name of those parents, well, they could be Octurian or Orion <laughs> or Syrian. And those had parents of their own. And they had parents of their own. And I want to tell you that every single one of those groups are your creative groups. Some are your grandparents, some are your great grandparents, some even more. And I want to ask you this, what do you know? What do you know about the attributes of grandparents that your parents don't have? How do you feel about your grandparents living or dead? You look at them different than your parents, don't you? Your parents are hands-on, aren't they? And your grandparents, they're not. They're the ones who want to entertain you and help you, and you're there all the time, and they take you places. <laughs> Mom and Dad, a hmm, little different. The Pleiadians seated you, and they're the ones who are opening the time capsules. They're giving you all the information. They're the ones putting you through the tests. They're the ones who are saying, come on, let's go. Ah, but the grandparents, 
They're the ones giving the most help. Do you understand where this is going? Arcturian, Orion, Syrian, you have in your DNA who they are because it comes with the territory. <laughs> Akashic inheritance, you know them. They know you. They're probably the most helpful groups on the planet. Don't separate them. Don't worship them. See the system, dear ones, for what it is and absorb them all. Now we have right now with us, that's interesting. I didn't know whether they'd come or not. <laughs> and they did. And they're here by free choice. And they're celebrating the truth and the demystification of who they are. And those who channel them may say they're from here and they're from there. I want you to tell, tell yourself and your brain, look for the metaphors. Because they're, they abound. But they are your grandparents and they are your great grandparents. And that is why they feel so good. And that is why the channeling from them is so pure and so excellent. If the channeler is doing it right. They love you. They know who you are. You're going to see more of them. And when I mean see, I mean awareness of perception of the old soul with things unseen but that are real. And so to this group of old souls who sits in front of me, I ask you, does this make sense? And are you all right with it? It's important to my partner and to me as cryon. In the new teaching mode that I am now in, that the old souls who sit in front of me are understanding what I'm saying and I'm not talking in code. I'm not talking right now in metaphors at all. I am talking about the reality and common sense of a system that is beautiful. Right from the creative source which you call God. God is bigger than anything you've ever been told on this planet. Anything. And as you start to perceive it, I want you to remember one thing before we say goodbye. As you start to perceive the wonder of the Creator, I want you to remember that's you. That's where it came from. Your Akashic lineage is God. Ponder it. It's about time you picked yourself up, stood tall, claimed it, said hi to your grandparents. Maybe they've been waiting a long time for that. Too spooky? Hmm. <laughs> for some. For others, the truth rings like a bell of purity and answers the questions that they've been asking a long time. For it's time. You've got help. Acknowledge.